Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, today we are going to do a small session on BERT language model and see some of its uh, capabilities and a small demo on it. So before we start, uh, let's just follow some knowledge etiquettes. Punctuality, please be on in the session five minutes before. Feedback, please provide your feedback after the session is over. Uh, please keep your devices on the silent mode and please avoid any kind of dis disturbances if there is. OK, and our today's ag agenda will be introduction to LLMs, which is generally means large language models, and then we'll have a small introduction on NLP. Then we'll cover uh, over the bird transformations, transform transformers. So we'll start on with the introduction, pre-training on BERT, what are the components in it, fine-tuning on, on those, what are its application, and then a small demo at the end. OK, so let's start on with introduction to LLMs. So LLMs, or known as large language models, are powerful AI models that are designed to process and generate human-like test based on input they, they receive. So yeah, these models have been trained on vast amount of data, typically from Google or any other sources such as um, you can say Wikipedia. These models have been trained on that, and they are learned learned on patterns and grammars and semantic relationships in the language. LLMs are built using deep learning techniques, particularly using architecture like transformers. This model consists of multiple layers of attention mechanism that allow them to capture conceptual dependencies in text. They are trained on huge data set using unsupervised learning where the models predict the next word or sequence of words given to the preceding context. OK, and one of the most famous one is obviously the chat GPT-3 model. And the GPT-3 model is the most advanced version and it, it has been trained on around 175 billion parameters and has demonstrated the remarkable capabilities so far. So it has also like have abilities like processing tasks, including text generation, translation, question answering, summarization, or even coding. So LNMs have numerous application across various fields. They can be used for chatbots and virtual assistant, context, content generation, generation uh, language translation, sentiment analysis, code generation and all. And LMs have a potential to assist with uh, complex language uh, based tasks, automotive repetitive processes and provide useful in insights in textual data. However, NLMs also raise ethical concerns such as bias amplific amplification. The potential of generating misleading information is also a concern. The issue of ownership, ownership and accountability is also there. Researchers and developers are actively like exploring methods to mitigate these challenges and ensure responsible use of LLMs. So in summary, LLMs are an advanced AI model capable of processing and generating human-like tests. This, uh, they have numerous applications and offer exciting op opportunities in various domains. So let's move ahead. And obviously LLMs currently are in very much in use and most of the industry or let's say clients are also interested in these models for their own work as well. OK, so let's move ahead to introduction to NLP. So introduction to NLP, we'll start with NLP is just a branch of AI ML that focuses on interaction between computers and human language. It involves development of algorithms and models to understand, interpret, and generate natural language. NLP enables uh, mach machines to analyze and derive meaning from unstructured textual data, such as emails, social media posts, articles, or custom customer reviews. By processing these data and insights, NLP can automate tasks, tasks like sentiment analysis, text summarization and information extraction. One key aspect of NLP is natural language understanding, which is NLU, in which comprehending and interpreting, interpreting human language allows machine to understand the context, sentiment, intent, and the entities within the piece of text, enabling applications such as 
virtual assistant and chatbots to provide intelligent response. OK, another important factor is NLG, natural language generation, is another import, important uh, NLP component. Focuses on generating human-like language as output. So allowing, allowing machines to create coherent and conceptually appropriate text or speech. NLP techniques rely very, uh, on a variety of methods, basically, including machine learning, deep learning, statistical modeling, etc. These techniques involve tasks such as tokenization, part of speech tagging, named entity recognition, synthetic parsing, and semantic analysis, and so on. So these are some of the basic key components of NLP and how we are using it in current life. Now, this, this diagram here is very interesting. This will just allow us how many like subparts of NLP is also there. So how many in how many ways you can use an NLP modeling method. So starting from the top left, let's see here. You can see like there's a sort of an Alexa and you are just asking what time is it? And it is able to re like response with the current time. So this is something which is like a part of NLU understanding and also like NLP as well. So understanding that the text which 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 is been given and it is able to generate the response. In the articles New York, New York uh, News articles for you, you will understand that this is also a very like key aspect which has been involved. So nowadays articles are like personally like conceptualized for your appropriate like the way you want to see or it can be like shown as to your preferences as well. So this is something which is also there in Netflix recommendation, but that is separate from NLP. But this is sort of something which is very similar to the Netflix recommendation system. Learn to code is again a very famous in current years. So NLP NLGs are also help also able to learn to how to code and able to give strict responses on the coding part as well. On the bottom left, you can see like if you text like this, you must have seen this on your WhatsApp already. Whenever you type something, the Google keyboard will automatically come, come up with some of the generated text or the suggestions which it will give it to you to use. And mo most of the time they, they are always right. So this is something that the NLU is able to do. So with the natural language understanding, the Google keywords is also being that that much advanced that it is able to understand what you are going to type. Again, the spam classification is already in use for years now, and this will also is is being used. And obviously, there are also like <coughs> pre-generated text which are coming nowadays in emails, like sounds good, perfect, and these are some responses which are already there, which is which is happening basically by the background processes which are able to like read the text from the upper part and just getting your response which you would like to give. And automated captions is already there with YouTube and similarly with MS Teams and everything as well. So automated captions is also part of natural text language generation and NLU as well. So this uh, diagram sort of explains the vast variety of components that you can apply the NLP on. So moving on. Let's go ahead and start with introduction to BERT. So introduction to BERT. OK, so BERT basically the full form of it is bidirectional encoder representation from transformers modeling introduced by researchers in Google AI in 2018. So yeah, it represents a breakthrough of NLP by demonstrating state of the art performance on wide range of NLP tasks such as text classification, named entity recognition, question answering, and so more. Unlike traditional language models that BERT that processes text in, in unidirectional or left to right manner, BERT employs a bidirectional approach. And what that what does that mean we will be able to understand in future slides? It learns to understand the context of the word by considering both sides, its left and the right of the context in the sentence allowing it to capture most comprehensive language representation. BERT is built upon a transformer architecture, which is a deep learning model architecture based on self-attention mechanism. The transformer architecture has proven highly effective in capturing relationship between words and producing conceptualized word representation. 
BERT use, utilizes uh, multi-layer bidirectional transformer encoders, which learns contextualized words embeddings by training on large amount of unlabeled text data. And obviously, the pre-training is also involved in BERT, which it obviously does, you know, like does in prior to this. So this is the pre-training part we will able to understand in future. And BERT also has contribution in the field of NLP. It has set new benchmarks uh, in various tasks and outperforming previous models by wide range. So BERT's ability to capture the contextualized data, word representation, and its versatility in being fine-tuned for different tasks have been made have have made it popular choice in the NLP application. So all the like if I go back to the previous slide, here the bird is basically able to do all of these processes by like like adding a fine tuning part in it. So we will get back get to know that in future. So, so for now, the its impact has extended to various industry. Uh, including chatbots, uh, search engines, recommendation system, and more where understanding of generating human language text are crucial. So let's go ahead. Now, now we move ahead to pre-training of word and what are the components in pre-training? Because pre-training basically involves a certain number of steps here. So for, first of all, most uh, like input model representation. So the input representation that is designed for BERT is to capture the meaning and the context of this text sequence. So there is certain steps there. The input representation in BERT consists of two main components, basically one is tokenization and another one is formatting. And the input are in the form of sentences or maybe two or more sentences, sentences that as well. Also the BERT is using word based embeddings with 30,000 token vocabulary and it breaks down the words into subword units as well. So what does that mean if suppose like you have a word like playing? So playing in, in the input text, we just add the play and the ing part will be replaced by the hash uh, intonations and we will see that in the future slide. Another part is like formatting the word. So BERT requires specific formatting to ha handle the input sequence effectively. The input representation consists of three special tokens. Uh, mostly the one is CLS, which basically means classification. The token represents classification task, and it is placed at the be beginning of the input sentence. It carries a, a, a learned representation that summarizes the entire input sequence for classification purpose. Another one is separator. The separator token is basically used to separate between two sentences or to mark the end of the single sentence. So the BERT model can uh, take pairs of sentences as an input. So to use a separate token indicates the boundary between the sentences. Another one would, would be the padding, but that is not that much in use, but obviously for explanation, it is basically used for fixed maximum input length. Uh, it, if the input sequence exceeds this length, it needs to be truncated. On the other hand, if the sequence is shorter, the padding is added to, eat, to reach the maximum length. So it is basically like defining a length on that part. Okay, after tokenization and formatting, the input text is converted into a token IDs that are corresponding to vocabulary of BERT. Each token is assigned to unique integer IDs and special tokens. So let's go ahead, we'll see this. Okay, here is a sample input model representation. So you can see here, like it's, it is saying, my dog is cute and he likes playing. And if you see here, play is a separate token and the ing is been taken as the separate because of the 32,000 32, word bags which it is using. It is basically identify, identifying the, you can say the ing parts as a, a subword unit. So you can see here the input at the front of the input, you can see CLS, which means it is a classification job. In the between, you can see a separator, which means the two of these sentences are separate from each other. And there is a separator at the end part as well. So now how it does that, it takes this input and starts doing, starts doing the token embeddings on this one. So it will like, like tokenize each of these uh, individual words in, in itself. 
and then it will do the segment em embeddings. And the most important part about the segment embeddings is that if you see here, before the separator, all of the, those tokens were considered to be of the same group. And after this separator, after the queue, which is there, those are considered as a separate group in the segment embedding. So this is basically to understand that this sentence, sentence one, sentence A is separate from sentence B. And we can check the relationship after when we want to. And there is obviously position embedding say. Position embeddings is basically to like, like to generate a position at, as to which word is language, which is all that it, it does. Okay. So go, moving ahead. So bird training, pre training is there are two parts of it. One is the semi supervised training, which involves like training on a large corpus of unlabeled data. And this data can be is pretty huge. You can see here like the data set can be from Wikipedia or from other parts as well. During this phase, uh, Bert learns to predict missing words in sentences. So in this uh, pre-training, the same is supervised is basically learning how we can like predict the words uh, in the sentences, which is very important. And the two main corpus which Bert has used so far for pre-training is the book corpus, which has the 800 million words and the English Wikipedia, which has around 2,500, that is million words. So M is missing it. So that's a pretty big corpus to in order to train or pre-train on. And there's pre-training, there is also MLM, uh, which we'll see in future, which is also part of the semi-supervised training, which, which basically means randomly like uh, taking a word input representation and the bird, bird's objective is to take the original word based on the context provided by the other words. So by training on the massive amount of text data, BERT learns to understand the relationship between words and captures rich contextual information. And additionally, there is also next sequence prediction, which is also a part of pre-training. So the pair of sentences are created from the corpus and the BERT is trained to predict whether the sentences uh, follows one or from the other as well. So this task helps Bert to understand like uh, the relationship between sentences and capture broader semantic information. Then we then there is fine tuning, uh, which we'll cover in future. So these are some of the part. So let's move ahead in the supervised training. Supervised training is basically can be also referred as fine tune, but supervised training is basically where we like fine tune according to our needs. So if we want to like do a spam classification, so we can like use a pre-trained BERT model and then add our layers on it to basically use it as a spam classifier or not. So you can see in this in, uh, in this uh, <laughs> diagram as well. So there is pre-trained model BERT, which is there, and we are simply adding a classifier on that, which is a small segment of code. Then we can simply like predict like if this is a spam or not or not spam. So like BERT is doing the heavy lifting for us and we are simply like going to make a small code to less like train on. So we, this is something like BERT is really helpful on. And semi-supervised uh, supervised training task is done on top of semi-supervised training model. Yes, obviously. And it involves specific tasks with labels and data set. Yeah, another thing to mention here, the supervised will always be on the labeled data set. So if you have the data set which already have the spam or no, not spam classification done, so you can simply just train your model above this pre-trained one and it will just do, do its job significantly. Uh, so this is something about the supervised targets. Now, mass language modeling is a part of you can say pre-training of the BERT or the semi-supervised training of the BERT. So in order to pre-train BERT transformers, uh, there are basic two approaches which were given. One was this mass language modeling, and another one is next sequence prediction, which we'll see in the next slide. So for now, mass language modeling is a technique used in the BERT uh, model, which is a state-of-the-art language representation. Uh, MLM is one of the two main pre-training tasks. And the goal of the MLM is to predict missing or masked word within a given text. So if you see in this diagram, in the input text, you can see 
after how are there is a mask which we we have kept and today doing is then kept after that so our job would be to break this mask and and in the output you can see that there is a highest probability output that is coming so you dare you these are some of the uh, probability that is coming and with the the word which will be having the highest probability which we will be, be will be given as an output so if we do a step by step explanation of the mass language modeling uh, how it works so the first part is masking so in training example the subset of tokens is randomly chosen for masking the common masking approach in word is to replace the each selected token with a masked token which is done by word in random samples input representation in input word model is a sequence of tokens each token is converted into its corresponding token token embeddings in mlm masked token are represented by mask as we see here uh, and then we have encoder layers word consists of multiple encoder multiple layers of self attention based encoders called transformer encoders these encoders have basically process the input tokens in a bidirectional manner allow, allowing the model to capture the context from both the left and the right side of the token then we go into the prediction of phase uh, during the pre training the bert model predicts the original value of the masked token for each masked token the model applies a softmax classification layer over the entire vocabulary generating a probability distribution over the possible tokens so the model is trained to maximize the likelihood of predicting the original masked tokens correctly so the training objective of this whole mlm is basically to minimize the cross entropy and loss between the predicted pro probability distribution and the true distribution of the original tokens so the loss is calculated only for the masked tokens ignoring the other tokens in the input so by training bird on a large corpus of mlm basically the model learns to understand the context and the semantics the semantics of the words in the language it captures a rich representation that can be used for fine tuning later for various downstream tasks such as uh, spam detection or sentiment analysis etc so mlm mlm is a crucial component of bird as it helps in model learning and handling missing or ambiguous information and it allows to leverage both left and the right context effectively so this rap, uh, this approach is has basically proven to be highly effective in improving the wide range of natural language processing tasks so moving ahead we'll go into the nsp which means next sequence prediction so nsp is the other part of the pre training of the bird and this is again a very significant one so next sequence prediction is a task in which the goal is to predict whether the given pair of sentences appear to be in the correct order or not so bird basically is a tra transform based mod model that has been widely used for this natural language processing task including next sequence prediction as well to perform next sequence prediction uh, with bird the model is fine tuned on specific downstream task in case of nsp the model is trained to predict whether the two sentences are in correct order or if they have been swapped so the input to the model consists of two sentences and the model is trained to classify whether they are consecutive or not and you can see here the in the training data 50% of the sentences are actual pairs and they will always have the lab, label of is next and if other 50 random sentences will have have the have the label not next which means these two are not like in sequence with each other so this is a simple snippet you can see here how these are there so the man went to store and there is a mask there and he bo he bought a gallon of that mask milk so these two sentences are seen to be in sequence while the other one the man masked towards store that penguin mask are flights less birds so these two sentences are basically not in sequence so that that's why it's labeled not next we are feeding this to in the training part of the bird so for it to understand the conceptually what is the difference and how it can like understand the differences so after final representation this is something we are doing 
And once the model is trained, it can be used to predict the order of the pair of sentences by providing tokenized input to the model and obtaining uh, the predicted label. So next sequence prediction of bit bird is a valuable task as it enables the model to understand the relationship between sentences and, and the information that aids in downstream tasks like natural language in interface, question answering and sentiment analysis. OK, so let's move ahead. Fine tuning, so let's see what fine tuning here occurs. So fine tuning in BERT is a process used to adopt the pre-trained BERT model to a specific downstream task. So BERT is a state of the art language model and because it has been pre-trained on such a large uh, unlabeled text data, fine tuning involves further training on pre-trained BERT model on a smaller labeled labeled data set. So the, the main difference is there. So while we have pre-trained the BERT on the early unlabeled data, now we are providing it a small labeled data set for our specific downstream task that could be uh, for example, spam, spam classification or could be sentiment analysis or question answering, whatever is your need. So the main idea behind the fine tuning tuning is to leverage the general knowledge and the language understanding capabilities learned by BERT during, during its pre-training and transfer that knowledge to the specific task that we want to do. By doing so, the BERT can effectively learn task specific patterns and nuances from a relatively small labeled data set. So that's one of the key benefit here that we don't need such a big data set for, for a labeled data set, so to say, for our training after that. Only a small labeled data set will also work because BERT has already pre-trained so much that it won't re require much time to understand the labeled data set as well. So that's first, it makes it highly effective even with limited training examples. So the process of fine tuning, there are certain steps as well. There is task specific data preparation. There is model architecture. Uh, BERT has a fixed architecture. So for the for in that case, the final layers of the model known as the task specific layers need to be like modified to match the number of output classes or a specific requirement of a task. So this can be like like depending on your use case, what you want to do. Parameter initialization is another thing uh, which you need to like be like put your head on like randomly while keeping keeping the pre-trained BERT layers intact. This is important to re like retain the general language understanding learned during the pre-training. Fine tuning is obviously we are doing here. Training train the modified BERT model on a task specific data set. During this process, the pre-trained layers are frozen meaning their weights are not updated. While the task specific layers are trained to adapt to the specific task <laughs> and the entire model is trained end to end and the gradients are back propagated through all the layers and thus how it does its fine tuning task. And there is also hyperparameter tuning, but that is a bit out of the scope of this uh, knowledge session. We are not covering that one. And at the end, we are like doing the evaluation after that fine tuning. The performance of the fine tune, tuned model is evaluated on a separate validation or test data set, just like any ML model. This step helps obviously access, uh, like to assess like how well is your model working. So that is the main idea behind the fine tuning. And, uh, and then fine tuning provides several benefits so as well, so such as leveraging the knowledge, the large corpus of the pre-trained and achieving the state of the art performance on various natural language. So this is why like BERT is like quite famous in use nowadays because we are using a large corpus data set at the back end and we are just like you like fine tuning it for our business purpose or for our particular needs. So let's go ahead. We'll see some of its application. So here are some of the application where the BERT can be used. So some of them are text classification where BERT can be fine tuned to tasks such as sentiment analysis or topic classification, spam detection. The model can be trained on a labeled data set to classify into different language categories. Named entity recognition or NER. BERT can be used uh, for entity recognition task as well, where the goal is to identify and classify named entities in text. 
question answering is quite a simple task uh, nowadays, but BERT can also fine tune for this as well. Depending on the context passage, it learns to identify the relevant context and generate accurate answer. Text generation, BERT can be used for text generation task, task as well. The model predicts the next word and generates the complete sentence based on a given prompt. Text summarization is another very useful case of the BERT where BERT utilizes for abstract, abstractive text summarization where the model generates a concise summary of for often longer document or article. Language translation can be employed for machine translation tasks where the model is trained on to translate text from one language to another. Text similarity or clustering can be used to calculate similarity between two pieces of text or perform text clustering to a group of, group of similar documents. So yeah, these are the application where the bird can be used. And these, these are a few examples here. So you, in short, we can just have an idea like how much versatile bird is on all the separate categories. So let's move ahead. Okay, now let's move on to the demo. Uh, so let me just bring up the demo one. Um, okay, I hope this screen is visible now. Okay, so let's see. So for the demo part, I've basically chosen two which I thought would be useful for this. So one is the best feed word and another one is the sentiment analysis. So let's first start on with the best fit word as so to how it's working. So basically we are like if people haven't heard about hugging face, hugging face is basically allowing us to like import these models of uh, pre-trained models are already there which we can simply import here. So we here we are like importing the bird based uncased model and the tokenizer as well from that. So you can see these are from all from pre-trained model which are already there. And here we are passing our text. So you can see our input text is here. Hello, my name is Darren. Nice to meet. And then we have put in like added the mask here. So our job is basically to predict this mask, um, what it should be. So let's pass on this input. And next you can see like we are basically tokenizing this, this text here. So if you want to see how we are tokenizing the text, I'll just simply add this here. Okay, now you can see like each of the words have been tokenized in separate uh, categories. And the mask one is basically which we are going to predict. So we have taken the masked index from here and we have passed into that variable. Then we are like simply like doing inputting, inputting the tensors and using the tensor from the torch by torch library. And then we are going to simply like predict, try to predict this. So at the end, if you see here, the output shows here, hello, my name is Darren, nice to meet you. So it was like able to predict that, word. like this was the best feed word which it was able to give. So let's select now change, try to change this mask from here. I'll try to move this one somewhere else. So let's uh, move it here in front of Nice. We'll now try to take that and I'll add this one. We'll do the same thing again. So now we have the mask here in, in front of here. Now let's try to do this. Here you can see like, hello, my name is Darren, and it was able to predict that the word, the masked words should be nice. So this is something where like we can use our bird. So we have already like used this pre trained model and we have just down shifted its task to like doing this best speed on also. Yeah, so this is a small snippet how you can use it. Next is sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis, I think everyone knows, is to understand the sentiments of the text, if it is a positive or a negative, if it is a good or a bad. So the, here again, we are using the bird based uncased uh, pre-trained model, and we are using the sequence classification like from the book on this one. So I have like added a simple text here, like this movie was good, and let's see what, Sentiment predicts here. 
So yeah, you can see this is this is training as negative. It should not be. They can just please learn this thing. Okay, uh, not sure why it's giving code, but let's change this. To see if it's actually overfitting or not. I think this has been overfitted here, but I think it was working pretty well before. Let's try some other setting. Okay, so yeah, so it was basically like overfitted on that text. Now you can see like we are getting the uh, predatory sentiment as positive. But yeah, uh, if we change this. Yeah, so right now it's facing a bit of overfitting, which it was not. Okay, but yeah. But we can also do sentiment analysis on this part as well. And this is something where we can use it. Okay, going back uh, for references, there are a couple of references which I have used here. So, uh, obviously, you guys should go through the Hugging Face community because there are a lot of models which you can use already. And there are a lot of pre trained elements as well as here. So there is BERT and you can go through this document as to how to you can use it. Uh, there is BERT uh, based on case which we use for our demo and you can go through this one as to how we are basically using this. There are different models of this is also available. And this is quite famous from J. Alamar. Um, he has like significantly like illustrated how BERT is working. And you can also go through this document as well. Yeah, that is pretty much all. And that is that is the end of the session for me. So if anyone has any questions, please bring up. Okay, I guess there is none. So I guess we are good to close this session. Okay, cool guys, thank you for joining. Uh, I guess that's the end of the session. And thank you for being here and please provide your feedback later. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Pranav. It was a great session.